Hi, this is Corey Franklin with Remembering the Past, the show where we talk about people who've died recently, who've had a profound effect on our history, our society, or our culture. Tonight we're going to talk about two nice Jewish boys from New York City, and we're going to start out with Stephen Franken, who died recently at the age of 80. Stephen Franken was a character actor in movies and in television, and he played one memorable character. He was one of those guys who had one memorable character attached to his resume. He was Chatsworth Osborne Jr. in the old Dobie Gillis show. little background on that. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was a book written by Max Schulman. Max Schulman was a great writer and satirist, and among his other works was The Tender Trap, which was made into a movie with Frank Sinatra. He was a satire on romance, and Rally Round the Flag Boys, which was made into a movie with Paul Newman, which was a satire on the military. He satirized all aspects of American life in the 40s and 50s. His opus magnum was The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. It was short stories and was compiled into several books. And it was about a boy who went to the University of Minnesota. And Shulman satirized college and all aspects of college life in this book, including the noblesse oblige of the rich who went to college. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was made into a television show quite popular in the late 50s. It ran into 1963 starring Dwayne Hickman. It introduced the famous character Maynard G. Krebs, the first character played by Bob Denver. Shulman was satirizing the beats and the intellectuals of that era, by the way, with Maynard G. Krebs. And it also introduced the character Chatsworth Osborne Jr., who was a wealthy, pampered rival to Dobie Gillis. He had a rich, snobby mother. He was sort of a fop who dressed in ridiculous outfits all the time. He lived in a mansion, and his chauffeur drove him to school every day. The mansion had crushed glass at the top of the 10-foot walls to keep out the hoi polloi. And the motto on their family crest was Latin for never touch principle. And as played by Stephen Franken, he spoke in this nasal Boston Brahmin accent well before Jim Backus used it for Thurston Howell in Gilligan's Island. And Stephen Franken played him to the hilt. You know, he was always walking around with a polo mallet or something like that. He got along well with Dobie, the grocer's son. He called him Dobie Do all the time, and Stephen Franken did that just right, too. Interestingly enough, the first character to play the rich kid on Dobie Gillis was Warren Beatty. He played a character named Milton Armitage with the same mother as Stephen Franken. And Warren Beatty only played in six episodes, and he was rather sullen, and he didn't really give the part much credence. Uh, he wanted to go on to movies. He was getting ready for Splendor in the Grass. So he really did a terrible job at it. And I've told a story where Warren Beatty denies ever being on Dobie Gillis, and Dwayne Hickman said he should fess up to being on Dobie Gillis and deny being in the movie Ishtar. But Stephen Franken took over the part with a different name, and he played Chatsworth Osborne Jr. about as well as you could. So well that he was actually typecast for a while, and the writers had to tone down his character and not use him in every episode, lest he take over the show from Dobie Gillis. Stephen Frank was the consummate, rich, pampered college kid. Even 50 years later, people came up to him on the street and asked him about Chatsworth Osborne Jr. I urge you all to find a copy of The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. You won't be disappointed. Or better yet, see if you can catch it on the old TV show sometime and see if you can catch an episode with Stephen Franken as Chatsworth Osborne Jr. It's a character that still resonates today. I'm going to move on now to Hal David, the lyricist who teamed up with Burt Bacharach, Bacharach and David. Hal David died recently at the age of 91. He came from New York City, and he was one of the great lyricists of the 20th century. He and Burt Bacharach probably did as many hit songs together as Lennon and McCartney. When people think about Burt Bacharach's songs, they rarely give Hal David credit, and the, some of the critics who do say that his lyrics were corny. Most people don't know what they were talking about. Hal David's lyrics were clever. Sometimes he told a great story in three minutes, and he did it in a huge number of songs. We can only scratch the surface with some of the songs that he wrote. And in fact, since copyright limits us to 30 seconds on a song, we can't even do justice to the songs that we are going to play. But I urge you, when you hear these songs, to go out and listen to the whole thing and listen to Hale David's lyrics. We're going to start with a song that he wrote for the Divine One, Sarah Vaughan, in the late 50s. He had been writing with Burt Bacharach a little bit. They'd written a couple of hits together, one for Marty Robbins, one for Perry Como. But Hale David's first really big hit was written without Burt Bacharach. It was the first million seller for Sarah Vaughan, Broken Hearted Melody. <laughs> About 
Three years later, in 1962, Burt Bacharach hires his young black girl, Dionne Warwick, to do demos. He likes her voice. He thinks it fits well with his songs. And he has her do a demo of a song called Make It Easy on Yourself that he's going to use for Jerry Butler. Hal David wrote the words for it. I'm going to play the best version of that song by the Walker Brothers, three guys who were not brothers, and their name wasn't Walker. They were Texans who migrated to England and were very popular over there. They did a great job with this song. Let's give a listen now to the latest from the Walker Brothers, written by Bacharach and David. Make it easy on yourself. If you do love you, and there's nothing I can do, don't try to spare my feelings. Just tell me that we're through And make it easy on yourself Great song. I like the Walker Brothers version better than Jerry Butler's. The problem is Dionne Warwick thought it was a great song too, and she thought she was going to be the first one to sing it. And she found out that she was just doing the demo. She got mad at her back and said, don't make me over. Don't mess with me. Hal David heard her say that. And he said, hey, that would be a great lyric for a song. Ian Backrack wrote the song for Dionne Warwick, and thus was born one of the great teams in music history. Backrack and David's song and lyrics and Dionne Warwick's voice. Don't make me over. I wish I could play all the Backrack and David songs for Dionne Warwick, but I can't, so I'm just going to play a couple of my favorites, and I'm going to put an emphasis on the ones where I really like the lyrics. They use this one in a successful Broadway show. Promises, promises, I'm a bird with promises, promises now. I don't know how I got the day to walk out. If I shall remember, I'll feel free. Now I can look at myself and be proud of left. of Dion's biggest early hits. If you see me walking down the street and I start to cry each time we meet Walk on by Walk on by My feeling If you don't see the tears Just let me breathe In private Cause each time I see you a huge movie hit that everybody knows from the opening lyric. What's it all about? Oh, is it just for the moment we live? What's it all about when you sort it out of me? Oh, we meant to take more than we give. Corny lyrics, no way. Here's a very popular one that sets you up for the West Coast dream, and the lyrics then let you know what the realities of life in Southern California are like. Do you know the way to San Jose? I've been away so long. I may go wrong and lose my way. Do you know the way to San Jose? I'm going back to find some peace of mind in San Jose. LA is a great big freeway. Here's the one with my favorite Hal David rhyme, pneumonia and phonia. What do you get when you fall in love? A guy with a pen to first your love. That's what you get for your trouble. Never fall in love again. Yeah. What do you get when you kiss a guy? You get another chance to catch pneumonia. Not too many lyricists pulling that one off. 
Well, I'd like to play a bunch more Dion work, and we are going to play one to close, but I want to emphasize that Backrack and David also helped a whole bunch of other careers. And as I said, they told stories, and they told some stories that Gene Pitney sang. This one was not used in the Lee Marvin, Jimmy Stewart, John Wayne movie. I don't think John Ford liked it, but it's a great song anyway. Was the point of a gun or was the only law that liberty understood when it came to shooting straight and fast? He was mighty good. Many a man would face his gun, and many a man would fall. The man who shot Liberty Valley, he shot Liberty Valley. He was the bravest of them all. Gene Pitney also sang maybe the best story that Hal David ever told. It's a three-minute song of adultery that leads to a breakup. Oh, I was only. Love that little piano flourish there at the end. Another great song. I couldn't decide whether to use the movie version from What's New Pussycat by the English group Manfred Mann or the up-tempo version by the L.A. studio cat Arthur Lee, which Burt Backrack hated, so I decided to play them both. Here's a Little Red Book, first by Manfred Mann. I just got out my little red book the minute that you said goodbye. I thumbed right through my little red book. I wasn't sure goodbye. And I went from A. Then by Arthur Lee and Love, I'll let you choose which version you like. great versions of a great song. Backrack and David also helped some female artists besides Dionne Warwick, including two of the great rock female singers of the 60s. And all you need are their first names. First, Aretha. The moment I wake up Before I put on my makeup I say a little breath for you I'm combing my hair now And wondering what dress to wear no way those are corny lyrics. Here's Dusty with a great song. Wishing and hoping and singing and praying, planning and dreaming each night of his charms. That won't get you into his arms. So if you That's one of those complex backrack melodies that it must have been hard to write lyrics for. For all the great songs they wrote for Dionne Warwick and Aretha and Dusty, I think the two greatest female performances of Backrack and David were by two other females. One was by an English artist. She's not that well known in the United States, but she was very popular in England. She did a great version of this song that was also covered by Dionne Warwick. This is Sandy Shaw with Always Something There to Remind. I walk along the city streets you used to walk along with me. And every step I take recalls how much in love we used to be. Oh, how can I forget you when there is always something there to remind me? But if I had to pick the greatest performance of a Backrack and David song, it would be this one. It's one of my favorite songs. It was done by a lot of people, including Dionne Warwick. 
the Winona Judd did this one better than anybody else. I considered using this for the close, but since I could only use 30 seconds, I decided against it. If I could have used the whole song, I would have. Another complex back rack melody that must have been hard to write lyrics for, but Hal David did a great job in Anyone Who Had a Heart. And listen to Winona sing this. <laughs> That's when you got to check out. She sang that at Burt Backrack's 70th birthday party. And the Backrack on the piano, and it doesn't get any better than that, trust me. In any event, we're going to leave Backrack and David and go only to David because two of his greatest songs were done after his partnership with Burt Backrack ended. One of them was a very well known song from the 80s with an unusual team of Willie Nelson and Julio Iglesias, but it became a huge crossover hit country and pop in the 80s. It's interesting that Hal Davis could write stuff that was very popular in the country chart. Here's Willie Nelson and Julia Iglesias chewing the scenery for To All the Girls I've Ever Loved Before. Lyrics by Hal David. To all the girls I've loved before Who traveled in and out of my door I'm glad they came along I dedicate this song To all the girls i Okay, maybe I'll give you a little corny on that one. But I'm going to come back with another country music song that Hal David wrote the words to. And I was surprised when I found it out because it's one of my favorite country music songs. It's one of the most beautiful country music songs I've ever heard. In fact, one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. It's done by Ronnie Millsap, the blind country music singer. You won't get a better song than this. Lyrics by Hal David. It was almost like a song. Once in every life Someone comes along And you came to me It was almost like a song. That's another one I would have used to close if I could use the whole song, but only 30 seconds I couldn't do it justice. But I defy to find any contemporary lyricist who wrote better lyrics in a song than that one. Listen to the whole song if you get a chance. As I said, Hale David wrote for both pop and country, and he was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1972 and the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1974, which is an unusual distinction. Not too many people could do that. He won all sorts of Grammys and all sorts of awards that aren't as important as his actual music. I had to choose the songs to play, so I left out some songs. Some of the songs I left out include The Look of Love, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, This Guy's in Love with You, which was a huge hit for Herb Alpert, and Close to You, which was a huge hit for The Carpenters. In other words, the songs I didn't play could have made for a great show. I want to urge you to go back and listen to a little bit of the Whitney Houston podcast, because in that one I have her mother, Sissy Houston, singing another great back rack and David song, I Just Don't Know What to Do With Myself. You listen to that one and you realize that it's a minor back rack and David song, and it's still a classic. I'm going to close on that note. I want to thank my producer, Sid Tepps. And as I told you tonight, I had trouble finding a closing song because there were so many good ones. But since it was about the lyrics of Hal David, to pay tribute to Hal David, I wanted to pick the lyric that I thought was the best, and it's from a Dionne Warwick song. It's from 1970, at a time when rampant materialism was a concern in the United States. It's back rack and David, and Hal David's lyrics address it better than any hippies or folk singers did at the time. Listen to Dionne Warwick sing Hal David's lyrics in paper mache. The one thing I seemed to do well at was in writing. Uh, writing stories, writing whatever. It just seemed to be part of what made me tick. Twenty houses in a row. Eighty people watch a TV show. Paper people, cardboard dreams. How unreal the whole thing seems. Can we be living in a world made of paper machines? 
Everything is clean and so neat, like paper mache.